Boom. We in the building, y'all. Time for some follow up calls, y'all. It's time for some follow up calls, y'all. Follow up. Follow up. Pick up the phone. Let's go. Hello. What's going on? Good to see you. Good to see you. Happy. What is this? Hump day? Happy hump day. What up? What up? What up? What up? Pulse Haber? Pulse Harbor Media in the building? What up, y'all? About to make some follow up calls. Talking to some real estate people. Got several leads I'm about to call back. People who have shown interest in selling. Don't know if it's going to be a deal or no deal. Might be some trash. Might be some goodness. Who knows? So thanks for jumping in. Shout out to the replay viewers and welcome to all the live viewers. For those that don't know, my name is Chris Monroe. It's the student master teacher, Mr. I Stay Woke. I'm out of St. Louis, Missouri. I buy real estate here in St. Louis. I do creative finance everywhere, meaning buying houses subject to the existing financing, seller financing, we buy them cash, we do creative deals, we stop auctions, foreclosure auctions for people, so all that good stuff, that's kind of what I do. So what I'm about to do today though is call some leads and try to get a deal. Uh, got a couple of them in, uh, looked like another one came in this morning, and I got one that's here. This came back as a text message from our text campaign. Came from a real estate agent. Says, good morning. This is Jennifer with Caldwell Banker Gundanker. Reaching out on behalf of my client at this address. This is an O'Fallon, right? Um, I was able to get a mortgage to hold off on a foreclosure and will be selling as is for a flip or buy and hold opportunity. If interested, please reach out. So some kind of a way... I don't know if this is something we've marketed to or not, but I think it had to be because of the number they're coming back on. What up, Johnny? What up, Tyson? What up, y'all? So I think this is something we marketed to because that's the only reason they could have got this particular number because this is one of our marketing numbers. Uh, or maybe the client gave them our number. Something happened where this agent is reaching out to us saying, if interested, reach out. So what am I going to do? Reach out. Let me make sure I got this right address, though, because I'm thinking something ain't right here. I tried to pull it up, but uh, let's do this again. I don't think this address is correct. She said in O'Fallon, Royal. Maybe it's, oh, I'm spelling it wrong. Maybe that helps. Uh, Royal. Maybe she spelled it wrong. She put it all as one thing. Oh, there it is. I found it. Okay. Because the other one I looked up was a million dollar house. <laughs> I was like, wow, we're going to get a million dollar house. Oh, this is just a little $130,000 house. But that's fine. We could take it either way. So it's owned by a husband and wife, it looks like. It's a three bedroom, two bath. Uh, they bought it, looked like, for about 130 when they bought it. Out in a good area, O'Fallon, out in St. Charles. The value on here says 324 or up to 324 on the MLS. But let me do another little quick search before I call her and we're going to see what's going on. They were in foreclosure, according to the real estate agent. So I'm thinking we were reaching out to them and they had to come back. So let's see what's happening with that. What's happening? Let me check one more thing real quick. Because that's not listed from what I could tell. It don't look like it's listed yet. I thought she mis misspelled the words because the, the street is Royal Manor. I thought it was two words. It's actually one word. Hmm. Huh. What do I know? So yeah, there's a house sold out there for two ninety five. Another one sold for three thirty five. Another one sold for three thirty five. So yeah, it's worth about three hundred. In perfect condition, that is. That's going to be our after repair value. A R V. The R V. Look like a beautiful house, fourteen hundred square feet. So now I just got to reach out to this agent and see if we can work a deal. But it looks like she's representing uh, the actual people who own this. Jason and Angie. So let's see what she's talking about. <clears throat> so give this video a thumbs up, give it a like, give it a share if you care. And I'm about to call Miss Real Estate Agent who stopped the auction. Uh, let's see here. Jennifer is her name. Her number is. Let's call her up. Hope that ain't too loud. Turn it down a little bit. Blast it. Hello. 
Hoping Griffin, Jennifer, this is Jennifer from Maple Pew. Well, good morning, Jennifer. This is Chris. You had text this morning in regards to your property you have, I guess, on Royal Manor. How are you today? Yes, I'm, and I'm sorry, so I'm speaking to you. My name is Chris. You had reached out this morning via text message saying that you had a property that you stopped an auction for or something like that. Okay, um, yes, is that, is what that, number did I send that to? Because the number coming through doesn't ring to what I've done. Yeah, that was my text, that was my text marketing number. So this is my direct line here. My name is Chris. Okay, I'm, gotcha. So was it the... 370 number? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, you sent the message saying, let me pull it back up. Something about you had to stop the auction. But yeah, so what's going on with it? Is it still available? Um, it is available. Um, so um, I have listed the property for her. We're going to do it as an off market. Um, I don't know if you, I, I don't know your situation. Like if you just help people out of foreclosure or if you're an investor looking to, you know, um, potentially purchase properties. But um, I am, we are showing the property to um, just a select group of people. But again, I reached out to anybody that had reached out to her um, in case you were looking to purchase as, you know, an as a slip um, that we will be showing today, oh, um, wow. Friday and Saturday. Perfect, perfect. So yes, I am a cash buyer investor, buy all over St. Louis, been buying for a few years now, and we definitely are looking to buy not just this property, but others if you have others that fit our buying criteria. So you consider okay. this property to be a flip. What made you say that? Oh, it will be. Um, it will be sold as is. Um, it is. So if you have a pen, I will give you the good, the bad, the ugly. How's that? Come on. Hit, hit, me, hit me heavy with something then, Jennifer. <laughs> okay. So um, we are listing the property at 225. Um, so that is the um, requested, you know, list price on it. Um, it is three bedroom, two bath, two car garage, a little over 1,400 square feet. Um, unfinished basement. It is an in grade home site. It is not a walkout. Um, if you do choose to view the property, um, you will notice going in the amount of stuff in it. So I would kind of consider it more of a hoarding situation. Um, as well as she does at this time have a large dog and three cats. So you will also um, denote a very strong cat odor um, when you go in. So those are, you know, first two things up front. Um, she will um, take what she needs once and can, but it will be left, it will not be left vacant. So again, part of your consideration would be that it will, you know, need a, its own trash out. Um, by you after acquisition. Um, the good, a lot of the systems are newer, so roof 2019, um, architectural shingle roof, um, Jerry Kelly heating and cooling um, handled HVAC. That was originally all of it, furnace and air, so entire HVAC was replaced in 2011. Um, air conditioning still remains 2011, both the outside condenser and the in interior, you know, a coil in the upper cabinet. Um, however, the bottom cabinet or furnace was replaced last year in 2022 under warranty. So furnace is newer. Great. Um, water heater is 2011. So none of the sensors systems are terribly old, roof and furnace, pretty new, um, air conditioner and water heater, not ancient, but not brand new, um, you know, that 12 going on 13. They were done in water heater, I think was June of 11, for, um, air conditioner was August of 11. So they'll be going on that 13 years this summer. Perfect, um, perfect. So let me so ask you this, is, let me ask you this, Jennifer. So say if we were to buy this and uh, fix it up, uh, we wanted to list it back with you as a fixed up perfect property. What could we get for it on a resale value uh, on the back end yeah, of this? Sure. So again, I can share, um, of course, I, that's what I did to kind of arrive at this pricing. But um, so when I do um, my um, CMAs, I will always start within the subdivision, looking at trying to look at similar or fairly similar style properties and then do a radius. So when I did that, um, the ranch sales last year actually were all 345 to 350. Um, they none of them were none of those were as is. They did from the pictures. Um, they didn't all have photos, but from the photos, did all look to have did all look to have some updates, um, but probably not to the same level as somebody who's going to go in and do a gut rehab and flip. Right. Um, the other thing they all had were um, basement finish actually. 
um, all of those. So again, if we equate that, she and I looked at more of a number, maybe a flip, um, in my opinion, conservatively, a 325. Um, you know, it would be your decision if you wanted to invest any dollars in that lower level. Um, I think you could do something moderate with just like a rec room to give a little bit additional living square footage that could be fairly reasonable um, and definitely pull some additional dollars. Plus with, um, you know, the newer finishes and stuff, I think it could be feasible to even pull above that 325. But we just looked at those 350s that they were not as their sales. Um, they had decent updates to them and had lower level finish. So we pulled that back. So, yeah, because that um, does make a difference. All of that to review as well. Yeah, perfect. And that's kind of what I saw just generally looking over to. And I was just trying to make sure I was on the right track there. So, yeah, we're yeah. thinking so so if we could resell it for around 325 on the back end. Uh, I think 325 or greater, but 325 to me would be a conservative low end. Perfect, perfect. So, and we would need to clean it out, do a little bit of updating, probably do all the flooring all over again. Um, you say the Simpsons are pretty good. The roof is good as well, I guess. Yes, roof was 2019. Okay, perfect. So really, perfect. there's no major renovations we would need to do here then. Is that correct? Um, That would not probably, I mean, I guess that would be up to you. Um, I think most people that I've talked to would pull kitchens and baths out. Um, I mean, they're oak cabinets. So, you know, again, and I did not inspect them extremely close, if you want to say, just because I'm going to assume most people would pull all that out. So, um, again, you can look at it and decide if you think, in your opinion, you could reuse those and then just maybe replace appliances, countertops, things like that. Um, and you wanted to reuse those, you know, that cabinetry or not, um, that would be up to you. But I would anticipate most investors would um, pull kitchens and baths. Exactly. Um, just to give it, you know, the new white whites, grays, whatever, you know, color choice you choose from. 100%. Um, so, that was, so, so that's exactly okay. what we, that's what we've done on the last ones we've done. We always pull all the kitchens out, all the baths out, make it all brand new and, uh, you know, make it good. Okay. So how long have you been a real right. estate agent for? Um, 29 years. Wow. You've been in the yeah. game a while. So you've seen the ups and downs of this market, huh? I, I've seen it all. Almost all. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, I'm no, I'm no spring chicken to the market um, and been a top producer. So, Perfect. Um, but yeah, so, and I so, just mentioned that because you didn't mention, you kind of said carpet and paint. And I was like, well, you know, somebody could probably get by without doing that, but I would just anticipate most people would. Um, the other thing that um, I will mention, so again, you may have made your initial thing because you saw, again, the foreclosure posting. Um, we were able to um, get her brought current, so we're not up against that January 25th date. Um, but so her preferred closing would be um, February 12th or 13th, um, just about four weeks. Um, and again, I think, as I mentioned, it would require a clean up from you because she will take what she can and needs or wants, but um, it will not be less vacant. Perfect. Um, okay, the so that's fine. The only other thing I mentioned, and again, you asked how long I was in the business, and <laughs> I'm not a fly-by-night couple deals here or there. I mean, I do a fair amount of business every year. So while I'm not an inspector, um, I do know what I'm looking for, right? Um, so I do look at a foundation and things like that. Um, I personally do not believe um, there is any stabilization needed when you are in the basement. And again, it is unfinished, so you'll be able to see everything except for about three feet because um, the three feet is um, when you go down the open staircase, you know, from the um, main floor, it goes down in the middle of the home and the landing lands at the back foundation wall. So you obviously have three feet of draw drywall at that point. Um, that being said, um, there are a few what I would call like normal shrinkage cracks, you know, um, nothing horizontal. Um, those are vertical, and but they do show probably some signs of past water penetration. So some simple epoxy injections are probably needed in those. Um, but the one item that I would point out and ask that you review is that um, I also, of course, in my tenure have learned that when you have diagonals, um, matching diagonals, you tend to show pressure on the middle of a wall. Um, usually where I see them, where I see concern in wall, and I can definitely, you know, see movement and things like that is truly a diagonal that's running top to bottom almost, and it's about 10 or 12 feet long, and they're matching left and right. That is not the case here, but there are matching diagonals left and right, but they're much higher on the wall. They go from, say, the top down to about a third of the way um, is where they, you know, hit like the side wall. Um, but it could still be showing signs of pressure. Um, 
I do have the reference point, though, of that three feet of landing that is drywalled, so I have two by fours. Um, if I look at those two by fours from the side, I first have to assume that um, those are flush, right, and level, um, top to bottom. But assuming they are, I would say the top of the foundation is a little bit closer to the um, two by four than the bottom. Okay. Does show potentially some movement. I think it's within a tolerance. My guess would probably be that like inch and a half or something. Mm -hmm. um, I will not get a written report on it, but I do personally use Jesse Palmer with Top Notch Foundation Repairs and Waterproofing when I, you know, do have homes that have issues that need stabilization or things like that. And as a favor, Jesse is going to come over tomorrow and look at it with me just to tell me if I've lost my marbles or if he's in agreement with me. So I won't get anything in writing, but I will, of course, disclose if he says I've lost my marbles and this one needs stabilization. Yeah, so, that makes um, sense. But again, from your perspective, I would ask that you look at it and you make your own decision and opinion because of what I do see there. Exactly. Okay. And that's normally what we do. We buy them as is for cash and, you know, we take the risk. So we just have to buy it right from the very beginning. And so I'm just doing some preliminary numbers here. Um, I'm, I'm looking, you know, as a cash deal, if we were to just to buy it, close when they're ready, take it as is, and even paid your real estate commission. I mean, what do you think if we came in around 190? Um, I mean, I'm not an agent who does things verbally. Um, I would anticipate that she will probably get closer to her asking price. Um, but I could be wrong with that. Um, we are showing today, Friday and Saturday, so um, some showings just began this morning. Um, so, again, I don't have anything, you know, in writing from anybody. But, um, you know, again, I, I can't say. Um, I don't know. I would anticipate from my knowledge it'll sell closer to that. But, um, again, I, I don't know that, and I won't necessarily be able to share that without her permission. So. I understand that perfectly. So, one other thing. Yeah. I can get you something in writing as well. That's not a problem, as well as, you know, proof of funds and everything. Because, like I said, we buy houses all the time. Um, so, what we've done in the past in situations like this, when they've had, like, these foreclosures, what we've done is caught up arrears and took over payments for people. Uh, you think something like that will help her out? Um, she is already caught up. So um, that is why we're not up against the January 25th date. So even if we were still to say get her more money or get her that actual asking price, cash her equity out of the deal or something like that, you think that would be something she would be open to, to where she can get the actual price she wants? Um, my apologies. I don't, I guess I don't understand what you're saying. So would you yeah, so, yes. Yeah, so yeah. So what we've done in the past in situations like this, we've, uh, either gave the seller moving money, paid the realtor, their commission, left that loan in place and just took over that house with the loan in place and started making those payments and did the repairs from there and gave them their full asking price. So they wasn't taking, you know, a big cut on uh, how much they're going to sell it for. No, she is planning on moving, so I don't think she's interested in having you take over a note. Um, I don't know if it's assumable, um, but I don't think she's interested in staying. No, no, no. I don't want her to stay. I'm saying, I was saying the loan would stay. She would move on and go to move on and live her life. You would go on and do more deals as well, like you've already done in the last 29 years. Everybody would get paid at closing. Everything be, mm -hmm. we take the house as is. Just like any other transaction, the only thing is that loan will stay in place and we just continue making those payments going forward. Have you ever okay. done a, have you ever I, done a I've deal never, like that I've before? Never, I've never done a transaction like that. So unless I'm not understanding you, no. Um, I mean, I don't believe that she wishes to keep that loan in place. She wishes to have that loan paid off. Okay, that's fine. And I can get you more information on that as well, as well as a cash okay. offer for it in writing. Yeah, if, so if that I you can know. share and maybe because I've never done that, but... Again, I mean, I would look at it as if that loan is not paid off, that, you know, there remains risk to her. So I, I definitely um, understand. I think she just wants the loan paid off, um, you know, again, a price where then she will turn around and, um, you know, of course, title will pay that loan off in full, so on and so forth. But Perfect. I mean, again, if there's something I'm misunderstanding, I do apologize. Um, and yeah, anything that you would want to send me on that. Yeah, I could um, definitely get you that. We do those deals all the time. And so do you work with foreclosures regularly or it just happened to be this one? Um, not on a regular basis. 
this. It's not my it's not my primary focus, but it is not my first go around either. So, okay, perfect. Um, you know, again, it's not the first one I've ever done in my time. Um, but again, I do them as they present themselves to help individuals that I know and trust. You know, perfect, so, perfect. So yeah, um, and that, and that's the reason why I brought it up. It's just a it's a backup option if a cash offer wouldn't work for you guys, and I can get you both so that you can know exactly, you know, how to present it to her or whatever. And I would like to see the property as well. You say you're showing okay. it all this weekend. What's the deal with that part? It will be shown um, today, Friday, and Saturday. And then, again, um, I we would ask that any written offers be submitted by 5 p.m. on Monday, and then I will meet with her to review those in full, um, you know, Monday evening and or on Tuesday. So you'll be making um, a decision on Monday or Tuesday next week? Yes, I would say by end of day Tuesday. Okay. So um, I don't know that, um, you know, we'll be able to do everything on Monday evening. So I would say end of day Tuesday. Makes perfect sense. So, yeah, I'll get you, like I said, both of those offer, the cash offer as well as a creative offer. Uh, after this call, I'll send you a text with all of my information. If you can just write back your email, I'll get you that offer okay. today. And uh, I'll, I would like to Very see it sometime good. this weekend if possible. Other than that, Miss yeah. Jennifer, um, any what, other questions for me? A, what is a good time for you? And I assume, do you have an agent that you would like to represent you? Or would you like us to take you through? Or So typically when we do these deals, we come in unrepresented. We do pay the, uh, okay. the seller's side of it so that they can get more of that money in their pocket so that they don't have to worry about you know paying you and things like that so we try to okay. make it as smooth and simple and clean as possible that's typically how we normally do them okay very good um so again i can do something definitely did you want to do something on friday or saturday um uh, what is best for you uh, let me check my schedule here, and I'll I'll get back with you as far as in the time because I have to see because we're we're actually getting ready to start traveling this weekend, and I want to see uh, yeah. exactly when we're leaving and everything before I commit to something. Perfect. You know what I mean? So that <laughs> not work. a problem. Then again, when we hang up, if you want to send me information, also if you would send me your email um, when you send me that information, um, and what did you want back from me? You said then uh, uh, just your email address because yeah. then I can send you the offer. That's not a problem. I'll send you a letter of intent. Basically, just saying, you know, outlining everything we're looking to do here. Just the stuff we're speaking about on the phone. Okay, very good. But, I mean, normally I would think that you would send that after you viewed the property, correct? Well, I mean, I've, I've heard, you know, enough when we bought enough properties to kind of get an idea of what we're going to have to do. Kitchens, baths, the normal stuff. It's not that, nothing major, but, um, you know, I can kind of tell where we want to be at on it. Okay. But I do. All right. Yep. So, yeah, but if you will send me your email, I will send you um, the disclosures that have been completed as well. Perfect. Okay? You'll have it before okay. you hang up. Okay. That'll work, Jennifer. Sounds have great. a good day. Thank you so bye much, bye. Chris. Okay, uh -huh. have a great day. Uh -huh, bye, bye bye. She says she ain't never heard of that. 29 years. That's crazy that people be in real estate 29 years and don't know nothing about nothing creative. All they know is throw it on the market and pray. So for this particular deal here, this was a lead that we were contacting the seller. I guess the seller gave our information to the real estate agent that she's working with. Uh, they did something to catch up their loan. Maybe they caught up the arrears. I didn't get too deep into that because that lady was a talker. She talked a lot and I didn't really want to ask her too much stuff because she was getting down a road, down a rabbit hole of stuff I don't really care about because I really just want to know you're going to take this cash offer or you're going to take this terms offer. I'm going to send her both, which is already in a pre-formatted LOI, letter of intent, that we send out to real estate agents or sellers that we speak to with the cash offer and seller side. So any questions about any of that, you can post that in before I make this next call and I'll try to answer it. Let me go back up here. Somebody was saying something. Where is the property located? O'Fallon, Missouri. Out there near you, Chris. What up, big Chris? Um, loan status in place. She's still the debtor. Sounds risky. So, yeah, like I said, that's the real estate agent. The seller I'm not speaking to. It looks like it's two sellers, a, a husband and a wife. Maybe they're getting a divorce. I don't know the situation behind all that, but um, they want two twenty five. dollars She said the house worth three twenty five dollars fixed up, and I can agree it's probably worth about that much. And she probably write a spot on with her number, but you know, we never can get it low enough. You know, us cash buyers, we cheat. So I said around 190, throw a number out there. 190, it would be a slam dunk deal. Cause I mean, I think we can put probably 30 grand into it, 40 grand and it'd be, you know, crazy. So that's where I would think I would like to be. Um, let's see here. 
what do you mean by paying the seller side of it? So mean, meaning in a real estate transaction, there's two sides, the seller side and the buyer side. So the real estate agent, there's usually a buyer's agent and a seller's agent. I was explaining to her that we come into the deal unrepresented as the buyers. We don't need no agent. I don't need you, to be honest. That was a nice way of saying, I don't need you. So we don't need her to represent us in this deal. We know how to do our own deal. But since she is representing her client, we'll pay that commission as well as the, the price we agree to to her client to get them the number that they want. What up, though? What up, Chris? So, yeah, that's basically what that means, uh, paying the seller side of the seller side commission. And that's it. Just to summarize it. Good question, Alliance World. Rawr. So what up, everybody that's just jumping in? Good to see you. I ain't never seen you with no fade. Shay must love it. <laughs> Shay they mentioning you on his live stream. <laughs> Say dang with the fade. Yeah, we about to go to Florida this weekend. As a matter of fact, I ain't tell her that because I ain't going to be here to see that house. We leaving uh, Thursday. So I ain't seeing no house this weekend, to be honest. But I am going to send her the offer. She already sent back her email address and I will be sending her that LOI. How much commission or flat fee do you pay a realtor? Whatever we can negotiate, typically whatever they agree to, if it's something reasonable, two, three percent. But if they start talking crazy like, oh, yeah, we got this, that and the other and or the numbers don't work, we'll let them. Hey, we can pay you X number to make this deal work. We can pay your seller this number to make this deal work and we'll take over that loan if that's the particular thing with that. So, yeah, we're going to Miami, Florida. For, I'm going to Miami, Florida for the first time. I've never been to Florida, period. So, yeah, that's where we're going to be this weekend. Uh, let's see here. Oh, that was her text message coming through my phone linked. Sorry. She sent back her email. So let me send her this offer real quick. It won't take but a second. So welcome everybody to just jumping in. For those that don't know, my name is Chris Monroe. It's the student master teacher, Mr. I stay work. What is this? Last day to make your payment. Oh, damn. Somebody said something about a late fee. Ain't nobody paying a late fee. We paid that. Threw my whole intro off. So, boom, we back. We back on the attack. So, yeah, I'm making some calls today uh, trying to help some people. That was a real estate agent we came across, and uh, they want to sell that house. So, let me get this offer up real quick. Shouldn't take but about how many minutes should it take to make an offer? Somebody put in the comments. How many minutes should it take for you to send out an offer? Answer me that one. She said she don't take nothing verbal. That's fine. I'll get you something in writing. I'll even get you a contract if, if you agree to these terms. Uh, let's see here. Let's go back. Sub two. I'm sending her a sub two offer, right? Matter of fact, yeah, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to use that one. So I got a template. All I got to do is change the price, change the address and send this puppy out pretty much let's see copy paste let's put her email address in miss jennifer and she's a chatty patty boy she can talk i said boy that lady can go <laughs> i said god damn she won't let me get in there let me jab in we call that a yellow seller or agent very bubbly very happy want to be your friend type stuff you have to be their friend to help that thing win so I don't know if I'm going to be going to see that house, though. So I'm going to say offer to purchase your house. And what was this address again? That damn Royal. Let me pull it up. Pull it up. Pull it up. Pull it up. Where is her thing at? I thought I had an address up. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it don't seem like it's a bad house. It's a 3-2 out in O'Fallon. So, I mean, they go for like 325 350 But, you know, we always want it cheap. We never can be cheap enough. Cash buyers are cheap, 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 cheap. But don't go too cheap, you'll lose the deal. But I don't want to really buy it off of the deal. Damn, what the hell I did here? Screw that up. Screw that up. Screw that up. Okay, so we're just gonna type it in because I'll try to copy paste this thing acting stupid. 140. Messed up my copy paste. I was rolling good and messed it up. All right, so there's the address. There's the email address. What price we say? As a cash deal, I said 190, and I'll just make that number up. 190, I'll say 192, 250. Made up number out of thin air. 
Now our cash offer, I mean our creative offer, will be exactly what she wants, the 225. And I don't even know if that would work, to be honest, because I don't know her loan information. Typically, I want to know the loan information before I can get into the weeds of that. I'm going to change that. I'm going to say loan balance plus equity. Uh, seller, I, got a, I don't know what that number is. So I'm going to say TB determine. And I got to say subject to. I will pay the commission, all that there, boom. So y'all wanna see what it looked like a little bit? So it says, thanks for speaking with me about your house at, I should say your listing, because this is a real estate agent. I got the wrong template, but it don't matter. I can edit it. About your listing at 140. I'll say off market listing, because it really ain't even a listing. Off market. That's my problem. I be trying to be too perfect. It ain't never gonna be right. And I make it just, just perfect. So yeah, let me show you what we got here so far. How do you flip this camera? Boop. So yeah, um, I was able to do some research on your house. Our all cash offer be that one ninety two. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, our terms offer be two twenty five as a purchase price and make payments directly to the lender. I gotta change that because I say your lender. Uh, and then it's got a little breakdown down here. And like I say, this really is not complete because I don't have all the information, but this is important right here. The contingencies, 10 day inspection, no appraisal, no financing. Uh, in case it is helpful, we gave them some previous deals that we've closed in this manner. This is a letter of intent. Exactly. That's what it is. Uh, so then we got, you know, some frequently asked questions. What is subject to? Is it legal? What should the seller say that it is? How can the seller verify the payments are made? You know, just some commonly asked questions. Uh, how is insurance handled? Um, do you plan on keeping a mortgage? All that stuff. So we got all that information, basic overview on how it works. And it's just really just a template because I don't have enough information to really give her solid numbers because I don't know how much they owe. I don't know how much kind of equity they're trying to take out. I could take a guess. Let me see. I think they're, if I was to take a guess, damn, somebody logged me out of the MLS. I was logged in. I got logged out. Let's try this again. What was that address? Oh, no fouling. Boom. So yeah, this is a letter of intent. That's what this is. L-O-I. Uh, they bought it for 130 back in the day. So they probably getting a big chunk of money out of that. So I think they could take the 190 to be honest. But what do I know? It doesn't matter. I'm sending the offer and keeping it moving. Because people like that, you know, when an agent's involved and I got to try to close the agent, the husband, the wife. I got to close three people at least in this deal. But if it's a deal, but we know they were in foreclosure. So they had some kind of issue going on. I don't know if they took a loan from a family member or somebody gave them some money to catch up their loan. Or they just did something with this real estate agent to catch up their loan. There's a lot of unknowns. And I don't really like going into deals blind like that. But that lady was talking so much. She was kind of making my head hurt. So I had to get off the phone with her. That's a personal thing. <laughs> so let me see. Uh, do you have a good cash buyers you work with or would you keep this property? I would buy that house. If she could take 190, I would buy it. Because we say it's worth 325. I would close on that deal. Slam dunk. I mean, but if not, say if we did 225 or 220 or somewhere in that area, I would probably wholesale it. But at 190, I'll buy that thing because that's a lot of upside. And it's in a good area. I mean, it would need to be fully cleaned out because like she said, the lady got a big dog and three cats. And if she got boy cats, them boys out there pissing all over the place. Boy cats be spraying Unless they're, you know, got their nuts chopped, but that's a whole other story. So we're going to see what happens with that. So I think this is good enough. Uh, let me just overview this real quick to make sure everything makes sense. Uh, yep. And then what, which is the best day I can get on the call to answer any of all questions? Uh, I'll just leave it at that and just send it an offer because I want to keep it moving. I'm going to call somebody else. I want to call a real seller that I can close right here, right now. That's what I like. Right now. What's she laughing at? That's that pissy cat. <laughs> That's messed up when they be dropping them uh, markings all over the place. So, yeah, I think this is good enough for this lady here. I'm going to go ahead and send this offer to purchase. Oh, I need to put her address in the title. 148. 
I like to put the address and the uh, what I did here in the subject. So when I need to pull it back up, I'll be easily able to find it. So everything else makes sense. And we're sending that bad boy. Now that took too long. That's because I was on here talking and doing all this other stuff. But I got our offer sent, email sent in writing. Uh, we're going to keep it moving though. Who else is in here that needs a call, y'all? Let's pull up the... Matter of fact, let me write this down in my notes before I forget. Because it's really not in our CRM or anything. This is like a, a on the fly, which can make it be forgotten later. We don't want to do that. And that was Jennifer we were speaking to, right? 29 years in the game. Never heard of none of this creative stuff. Never heard of Subject 2. Never heard of anything creative and outside of the box. Just throw it on there and pray. That's crazy to me. But oh, the game is to be sold, not told. All right. Let's see who else we got here in our CRM, in our Customer Relationship Manager. I think I saw some other leads in here or something. I know there's other leads. There's always other leads. You got to keep your lead flow up because you cannot get married to a deal like that thinking that, um, is this real? One, two, three. It's a fake number. Get the junk out of here. You cannot get married to one lead thinking that, oh, I need them to sell me the deal. You got to have a lead flow. Got to have a lead flow. And I can't answer that. So let's see here. Who we got next? This house is out in St. Peter's. And this was an expired listing, I believe. This other house here. Roof is 10 years old. They're fixing it up to sell it. Fix it up right now to sell so they're actually fixing this house up to sell it it's vacant three bedroom one and a half bath they're out of state and no have intention of moving back uh no number in mind as far as a price uh a cash deal market value said about 236 according to zillow this is a new property by the way um that i'm calling let's see what this house is like real quick just a quick overview. So yeah, two, three bedroom, one and a half bath, 1,154 square feet, worth about 236 as a Zestimate. Um, yeah, let's call her up. Let's call her up. Let me pull it up on this uh, MLS real quick. I just like to do a quick search before I even get on the phone with these people because I might have an extra question that I need them to answer before I get too deep into the weeds. Uh, yeah, it's only one person and they definitely live out of town. They live in Surfside Beach, South Carolina, but they got a house here in St. Louis. You never have to come back here. That's what I'm about to close her on. You never have to come back to St. Louis. See, I like to know the pain because that's what I'm selling them on. I'm not selling on a price. I'm selling on solving your problem and soothing that pain, whatever that pain is that you got. See, a lot of people make the mistake of trying to beat people up on price, just price only. I want to tell you that, hey, I'm coming with a solution to your problem. That's my selling point. I want to solve your problem, not just give you some number because sometimes it ain't just a number. Sometimes it may be something different and it's up to you to ask the right questions to find out, is there something different? Let me uh, pull this up real quick. Yeah. Um, was this an expiring listing? I can't tell. Or maybe it was a vacant since the house is vacant. Maybe this came off of the vacant list. Okay. Because they didn't put in the CRM what list this came from. And I'd be like, I want to know that before I get on the phone with them. Because I need to press that pain point. See, I'm always digging deep into motivation. That's what my goal is. How deep can you get into the motivation of these people? To either move toward a gain or move away from some pain. You want to know that. Before you start spinning off a whole bunch of numbers that mean nothing. So it says this house was done in July of 2023. So they don't, so they bought this as a flip and it's in a person's name. I don't know. And I can't even, oh, her name's Suzanne. Okay, let's just call Suzanne. We'll go from there. Let's just call her up. Let's call her up with a 484 number. I guess that's out there where she live at in um, wherever she live, South Carolina. Record the call for quality and training. Let's talk to Suzanne.
Hello. Hey, good morning. Uh, this is Suzanne. Yes, it is. Hi, this is Chris with St. Louis Cash Buyers. Looks like you spoke to my assistant yesterday in regards to your house in St. Peter's. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Good. Did you have a couple moments? Sure. Great. Yeah, I was just looking over the notes here that she took in regards to the house here. Uh, she said something about you were fixing it up still to sell it. Is there, It needs a lot of yeah. work still, or what, what kind of work does it still need? Well, it had us cleaned out, number one. Uh, badly. And, uh, what have we done? Oh my God. So that took a while. And I mean, we're talking every room in the house. We've painted. We've removed all the carpeting. We've had the drain opened. And like little fixes in the bathroom. He should be putting, I think, the floors down today in the bathroom. Um, I'm trying to think what else. It was endless. I mean, it's endless. Say the house that never stops, right? That's what happens in real estate, isn't it? <laughs> well, you know, it's it should have it should have been taken care of years ago. Yeah. I mean, and my nephew just left it go. You know, so. It is what it is. Yeah. You know. And so what is your uh, actual plan? So you're looking to just have him finish fixing it up and then selling it? Is that what your goal is? Yeah, that's my goal. So you don't want to sell it as is and just be done with it? Well, I I, I don't think I'm going to get it out of it unless I, you know, fix it all the way now. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, every case is different, so... You say he still has to put in floors. Yeah. And and then that's pretty much it, or is there a lot more after that? Windows. Windows, okay. That's about it. So after he fixes it fixes it all up, I mean, what are you gonna try to sell it for then? Well, I wanted to, I wanna come out with two hundred thousand and the money I put into it. So you want to get two hundred thousand plus, and the, and the money I put into it, yeah. Oh, okay. How much you put into it? I would say if I'm done, it's going to be a good forty five fifty. Woo wee! You ain't playing. You did a full rehab. Yep. Wow. Dang. Well, I don't know. I mean, you're kind of between a rock and a hard place. Once you start rehabbing them, it's kind of you know tricky. Yeah to kind of do something. So let me ask you this then, in a perfect scenario, how would you like everything to work out? Just, just if you were to just walk away, be done with it. I mean, what would you take for it just to be done with this property? Not, not doing it. So you wouldn't want to sell it like this. You would rather wait till he's finished. Well, not if I'm not going to get 200 out of it, no. And, and, why, and why you say the 200? What is that from? I'm sorry. Because I figure that's what I should get out of it. That's what the houses are selling for in the neighborhood, or did sell for in the neighborhood or more, unless they had to be rehabbed. Mm -hmm. And presently, there's not too many out there for sale. So once you finish fixing it up, you're going to list it with a real estate agent or something? Or what's your plan there? Yeah, I am. Okay. Well, you know, that all can definitely work. And then what's the timeline on all this? You think this is going to take a couple more months or something? or? Uh, I would say, what's this, January? I'd say he's probably going to be done in late February. But unfortunately, the window people have uh, a different timeline than us. <laughs> They're kind of booked up a little bit. Yeah, definitely makes a difference. So, so, yeah. so, it, so, so it's probably looking at end of March, which I would prefer. Well, I mean, we are interested in buying it, but I know if you want to try to go ahead and finish fixing it up, it's probably better to do that. Um, cause if we buy it as is, we probably would be right at the $200,000 mark and that wouldn't really help you out, would it? No, no. Yeah. yeah. And that's just as a cash yeah. deal. I'm, I'm determined to give you know, a hundred thousand each of my granddaughters to buy a house. Oh, wow. You even have it already spent. Yeah. 
cool, cool. Well, uh, I hope it all works out for you. Um, if something changes and uh, say you decide to just sell it and be done with it, we're definitely looking to buy in the area. So do you have any others here you want to sell or anywhere? No, I'm in, I'm in South Carolina and I'm staying. Oh, wow. I like it up there. I was visiting there last, what was that, November? Or no, what was that? Last okay. last summer, actually. Last summer, my nephew just graduated. So, yeah, I went to his graduation up there. Oh, yeah, it's nice. I like it, you know. Yeah. We get cold weather, no snow, though. None of that snow stuff. Yeah. And uh, when I moved from Pennsylvania down here, that my daughter-in-law and I were deciding what I wanted to really do. And we got 31 inches of snow, and I said, I'm moving. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I like it. I do. Okay, perfect, perfect. And So what I'll do yeah, here, so, uh, I'll just, uh, is it better for me just to follow up with you, say, in February or something, just to see how things are going, if something changes? Is that better? Yeah, that probably is. But yeah. I mean, I'm suspecting that, you know, he'll be done by then. And, you know, if and if worse comes to worse and my money holds out, then I'll just have somebody install windows. I won't wait for one of the window companies or something. I'll buy the windows they, and pay them to install. Perfect, perfect. That makes perfect sense. So I'll let you get back to your day. I'll uh, send you a text with my information as well, and uh, I'll just follow up with you in about a month and see if anything changes, okay? Okay, thanks for understanding. All right, have a good day. Bye-bye. You too. Yeah, they uh, already doing too much work to that house. I wish she shouldn't have did that. She ain't gonna get no two forty five, two fifty. That's all they worth. I mean, she might can. I don't know what kind of work they're doing, but she want full blown retail. Good luck. She said she want two hundred plus the forty five she got in it. That's two forty five plus she got to pay the real estate commission. How you gonna get that? That ain't happening. Oh well, they'll figure it out. Let me put her in here uh, as a long-term follow-up. She's nice, but, you know, nice don't pay the bills. You got to get off the phone with those people. You can't stay on the phone too long making friends. You got to get to the meat and potatoes. I'm just going to say follow-up. And I'll put in here to follow-up in, what is this? We'll follow-up in February. Let's follow-up around, what, Valentine's Day? Is that good? That's a Wednesday. We'll follow-up with her. Boom, create a task, once too high, and that's all we can do with her. Let me make sure that I put everything else in here. Uh, follow up scheduled, once too high, and keep it moving. Who else is in the CRM? I need a real lead, though. I need a real lead, somebody I can get done with. Get them done. Now, who keep calling? Hello, thanks for calling. I'm in the middle of a live stream right now, though. That's why I couldn't answer the first time. All right? All right. Bye -bye. Hey, call. Ain't somebody dying. I said, let me make sure ain't nobody dying. All right. So, ain't nobody dying. All right. So, um, who's my next person? Who is this? Trayvon. Yeah, this in the hood. Hey, Chris, you still in here? There's something you would like. You like them North City houses. I don't even want to call them. Is that bad? I don't even want to call them. You in here still, Chris? If not, I'm not even going to call. I'm going to move on. I don't want to be up on the north side. Just being honest. I want something I can actually buy and sink my teeth into. Uh, let's get this guy here. I tried to reach this dude the other day, and he didn't answer. Uh, hope he ain't list his house yet, because it says he was planning on listing it with the realtor. And I tried to reach him about three days ago. He hasn't listed it yet, so he's still in in process let me see so this house is in webster groves uh three bedroom one and a half bath i do st louis county preferably st louis and st charles county is what i like to buy in i'll look anywhere in america if it makes sense um, i typically would not buy in the hood though i would usually just wholesale those i don't buy those kind of houses too much headache for no payoff it ain't no upside on them deals not in my looking i like to make money Plus, you can't get long-term financing on them. If you get a house that's worth 40000 I mean, who's going to pay that? Unless you use a private lender and you're dealing with all the high risk of debt. Nothing wrong with the hood houses. I just don't buy them. I have some, but I'm not really looking for them, to be honest. Somebody give me one really, really, really great deal, I'll take it. But I'm not looking for one. So this was a three-bedroom, one-and-a-half bath out in Webster Groves. Nice area. And we're going to call this guy here. 
I tried to call him the other day, but he didn't answer. He might be at work. What is name of buyer for one party listing purposes? The buyer is St. Louis Cash Buyers. That real estate agent from earlier sent me a text asking me what is the name of a buyer for one party listing purposes. Uh, I guess she's drawing up some paperwork. Maybe she's going to put the offer in for me. Is that what she's doing? I hope not. As long as she said that that contract is assignable, we can do a deal. That's all I ask. Give me my uh, contingency and my assignability because I'm probably going to either buy it or assign it. doesn't matter. I want all my contracts to be assignable anyway. All right. So let's call this guy real quick. Let's see what he's talking about. If he answers this time, he didn't answer last time. <clears throat> hey, Christopher, how are you today? Who's calling, please? My name is Chris. You spoke to my assistant a few days ago in regards to your house over on Greeley and Webster. Yes. Yeah, is this a good time or is that, should I call you back later? Um, no, I'm in the middle of a, a meeting right now. Okay, no problem. Just try back this afternoon. Is that better? Uh, yeah, after four. After four. Okay, have a good day. Thanks. Bye-bye. Yeah. At least I got him to answer. He ain't answered the last time I called him. And I don't want to talk to people if they don't have their undivided attention, even though that's kind of a cold call at that point, because it's like, oh, I didn't expect the call. I'd rather have somebody's undivided attention if we're going to be talking about real estate. Don't wait to buy real estate. Buy real estate. Then wait. I don't fool with them unless I'm paying the 10K plus putting less than 5K in rehab and selling turnkey at 45 plus. So this house, uh, let me go back to that lead that was in the hood. You might like it, Chris. I don't know. I can call him since you're here. If you're here, I'll call. Other than that, I wasn't even going to call him. Trayvon, somebody named Trayvon up on Ruskin in 63115. He's asking 30000 so we know that ain't going to work. Uh, he said he's moving or just recently moved. I guess he's still living in it. I don't know what they're saying. These notes are kind of all over the place. He want to sell it ASAP. Um, let's just call him. I'll just call him. Ain't no biggie. And they say it came from the main line. So it looked like they called in. So this is an inbound lead. We didn't call him. He called us. So when people start calling you, I guess they mean they're a little bit more. You say, no, nah, I'm over. Re Hell no. Nah, and I'm doing a rehab over there. Nope. Why not, Chris? You might like this deal. I'll sell it to you for two grand. You'll take it. <laughs> tax D Wolf. What up, my man? Ah, ooh. The king got a tax deed. You want to know about tax deed? Hit up my man, tax deed wolf. That's my man right there. He ain't playing out here. So I'm making some follow-up calls for those that's just jumping in. I'm going to call this guy here. Even though this house is in the hood, we're going to call him. I just want to get him out of my CRL. Damn, I meant to call him from the number he called from. Please leave your message for... Okay. I didn't mean to call him from that number anyway. I meant to call him from the main line that he called from. Give him about 10 seconds and try again. I don't want to buy this house. I can tell you that already. Unless he take about five grand for it and then I get, sell it to you, Chris, for another five grand. Make 10 grand out of it. I just want to get him out of my CRM. Hey, that's the truth, man. When leads come in, you know, I, I know I don't want to buy it. I knew that. And I don't even have to look at the house. But they called us. Let's see if there's some pain there. Let's put them under contract if it makes sense and sell it to somebody else who wants it because I don't want it. I already know that's a deal I don't want. But he might prove me as a liar. You never know. Let's call him again. He might be doing something. Let's see. Am I calling the right number? Some dude named Trayvon. Trayvon Martin and his mom. He better answer the phone. Please leave your message for... Okay, see, I told you it was bad news. I shouldn't even try to call him. Keep it moving. He ain't even answer the phone. Who else is next? So we got a, that's Trayvon. Daryl, we spoke to him. Uh, I think I had a follow-up call. That's who I got. What's that dude's name? Paul. I need to follow up with Paul. I sent him an offer. I sent him a offer of... 
this ain't the guy. Let me go back. I'm looking at the wrong person. I had a whole other person. Let's see what we got here. What CRM do you use? So I use two of them. One of them is Podio, and the other one is Yo. What up, my man? How's it going? Happy New Year. Yo, same to you, man. I figured, like, I'm like, look, let me, I'm going to hop on here because I want my people to see this. That is serious. Oh, it's not just calling people up and see what's going on. Uh, yeah, I want my people to see, see your work, bro. Oh, I appreciate it. That's the name of the game. You got to talk to some people because uh, other than that, how are we going to get a deal, right? Yo, facts, man. So what you doing? You just, you are you cold calling? What are you calling warm leads right now? So these are people that have showed interest to say they want to sell. They've either spoken to my virtual assistant, gave some basic information. And so I'm just following up with them to either make them an offer or following up with them on an offer I already sent them. Perfect. 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 So yeah, I'm going to hang out, bro. I'm going to cool. hang out. I'm going to mute up. Let me see here. here cool. So this guy, I'm trying to remember the guy I spoke to a couple days ago. What is this guy's name? I thought his name was Paul. Maybe there's two Pauls in here. I'm going to call back. So welcome, everybody, to Just Jumping In. My name is Chris Monroe, the student master teacher, Mr. I Stay Woke. I'm out of St. Louis, Missouri. I'm doing some uh, real estate here. I buy deals creatively via subject two, and I buy deals cash uh, with cash, the way that everybody likes to buy them. So I'm always looking for deals and opportunities, and so... Um, today, I'm just following up with some leads in our CRM just to see if uh, anybody's ready to move on a deal or either uh, tell me to go to hell because sometimes they might say that. Who knows? So, uh, yeah, welcome. Let's see here. I got this guy here. I cannot remember this guy's name. Oh, there it is. Is that him? This is a character, too. If y'all saw my uh, one of my Instagram posts on a guy that was talking about the haunted house, that's this guy. He was like, yeah, there's, my house is haunted. So let's see, is this, this him? Yeah. Let's see if he'll answer that phone. Mr. Paul, let's do it. All right, put his number in here. And let's record the calls for quality and training purposes. Record all calls, because you never know what these people may say. You may need to go back and listen, or you might want to sharpen your, your skills up. Let's see if you can get better. Hey, hey, Paul, this is Chris. How are you today? All right, how are you doing, Chris? I'm in a meeting right now. Can I call you back? Yeah, yeah, you can call back. That's fine. Thank you. Uh -huh. Can't be scared to call. Can't be scared to call. Yeah, you cannot have that fear. Just swallow that pill and <laughs> red or blue pill. Which one you want? <laughs> Take that red pill. All right, so let's see here. Um, so Paul's not available. Let's see who else is in here. I was dealing with this other lady. Let's see. I see her in here, but I don't know if she's ready to play ball or not. Um, her name was Kathleen. Let's see what she's talking about. Uh, no, I think her house got took by the auction. She kept playing around. I'm going to call her anyway. I think something happened. I don't know if she was able to stop the auction or what. I think her house got I took because she was playing around i sent her the paperwork she was dragging her feet thinking about it i was going to stop the auction and buy her house but you know they wouldn't they wouldn't have it so let me call her up and just see if anything changed with her status i don't even know what her auction date was her auction date was if, if it passed i don't know it don't matter i'll just call her anyway let's just call and say hi sometimes you just gotta call these people and say what's going on just to, just to get them out of your cr get them out of my cr I want to get them out of here. They, I, I keep calling until they either sell it or tell me to go to hell. You got to keep staying on. Answer that phone. She might have lost it already. Who knows? All right. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Three, one. Okay. She might have lost that house. Who knows? There's a mute button on these phones, or that's just something you got on your phone? 
No, it's a mute uh, on the live. Really? They they didn't. Uh, maybe I need to update my app, or maybe I just don't know. I didn't even know it was a mute button. <laughs> yeah, I, I I typically mute up um, just in case. Like my team will run in here and just say something off the wall while you on the phone. <laughs> All right, you, just, you never know. Hey, that's the game we play. <laughs> Spontaneous. So let's see here. Who else we got? So that was that lady. How many people? How many people you got? Um, so you got you got VAs that are lining these up for you. One hundred percent. So I have two callers in the Philippines that are calling and texting people every day. We typically are contacting pre foreclosures. We're typically contacting vacant properties. We're also uh, constantly contacting expired listings. I love expired listings because they've already run the gauntlet and found out that no. I can't sell my house for whatever reason. So I come in with a creative option and many times that works. That's how we bought the last several deals is all expired listings. Nothing wrong with the house. They just want it too much and we can give them that price if you take these terms. So that's why I love creative real estate. I like that. You know, and these are just people that, uh, you know, they're just people. What's the worst they can do to me? Hang up on me, yell at me, say something. Let's see yeah. here. Right, I've been cursed out. Who is <laughs> Mary, this is a big deal. I don't know if they ever sold this property or what. This is a million dollar property. So they want 950. It's a commercial building. Let me see here. First floor is commercial, uses an office and warehouse. Windows need to be updated. Second floor is residential, three bedroom, two and a half bath, replaced windows and furnace. Uh, they've owned this property for 28 years. And this is in the heart of downtown St. Louis. Um, it's hard for them to maintain the building. That's why they wanted to downsize since it's just two of them. I guess this is an elderly couple. Uh, the roof needs to be updated. New furnace on the second floor. Uh, um, they owe about 140,000 on it. Owner occupied and they want to sell it within the next month or two. And they want 950 and it's open to negotiation. And I believe this was uh, an expired listing as well. I usually don't go for these big commercial deals, but I'm going to call her anyway. Since it's owner-occupied and no agents involved, why not have a conversation with a seller? That's what I look at. They might have something else, too. You never know. You know it. You know it. A conversation can go a lot of places. Shoot. Let me get this lady on the phone if she answers. Miss Mary. Let's talk to Mary. What up, Mary? It's me, Mary. <laughs> she might not answer, but I shouldn't say that. Let's assume she's going to answer. Come on, Mary. Get on this phone. Change my notepad to a new sheet, a fresh sheet. Come on, Mary. You can reach the counter. Mm -hmm. Sound like she smokes cigarettes. I'm gonna say I got some new ports. <laughs> You were all for laughing at that. Yeah. Hi, Chris. <laughs> Chris, I'm going to say you are for cash and clothes for cash. Yo, I'm childish, bro. <laughs> so let me ask the audience, what do you do if you call somebody and they don't answer? What do you do if you call them and they don't answer? You dust yourself off and try again. You call her back. Call Double them. tap. Call her Colleen, call her three times in a row. <laughs> Double tap. Come on, Mary. Oh, she's like, who called me at lunchtime? Me. I'm your lunch. You have three. The confidential voicemail of Dr. Mary Saint Clair. Oh, she's a Dr. Mary. Dang, Her you know she got that money. Dr. <laughs> Her Mary. voice sounded Ooh. better the second time. Yeah, she, <laughs> this sounds so bad. Damn, I'll give, give her a minute, and then uh, she might call back. Who knows? And Chris, you're in the you're in the St. Louis market, right? That's right, St. Louis, Missouri, right in the middle of the map. You got you got any deals right now? You got anything? Uh. No, some stuff I'm working on, nothing I can sell. I got I'm work I'm in a halfway through a flip in Florissant, 
We're, uh, we need to do, finish up the kitchen and the floors, and we're done with that house. But I'm not even flipping that. I'm actually going to try to cash out, refinance, and keep that house. That's my plan. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we got another house we just closed on last or the last Friday of the year, whatever day that was. Another house in Florissant area, North St. Louis County. So I love that area. Uh, we got a good deal on that house. So we bought that house for 50000 Actually, the real deal is this, it's going to take you down a rabbit hole. So we got the deal. I, I found a private money lender, not a private money lender, a hard money lender who said they would they would uh, fund 59000 for the house. So I went back and renegotiated, and I got it for 49000 from the seller. So I got the price at 49000 I assigned it to myself. <laughs> so I made 10000 at closing. Damn. So I already got, I got, I'm already way ahead on this deal. 10000 at closing. I got the house at fifty. Uh, so fifty nine thousand is the price that's on the loan. the The lender is also going to give the thirty thousand dollars in rehab, which I don't even think is going to take thirty in rehab. I think it's going to mm -hmm. take like twenty, because it just needs a kitchen and like floors and stuff like paint, like cosmetics. The kitchen is the major thing in that house, um, mm -hmm. and then the ARV is like one forty. So we're going to make out like a fat cat on this house. The only thing. I'm waiting on is the tent, the person that was living there to move out. He's supposed to be out. He's supposed to have been out already. He's still moving slow, but I just want him to move out so we can start mm -hmm. the rehab. So that's a slam dunk deal. That's going to be a good case study later on once that deal goes all the way through that particular deal. Yeah, that's fire. Don't forget, don't forget to send me some of them things, man. We what you what what do you like? What what is your bread and butter? Honestly, we just mostly anything under one mil. Anything under a mill that that's it's got to be juicy though. You know what I mean? If if we're doing a fix and flip, we ain't doing a fix and flip for just twenty k, right? right? We, yeah, we looking for it got to be at least fifty somewhere around fifty fifty sixty thousand. Uh, we'll do that all day. We got we just got um we just got a couple in your area actually. So now I need a contractor. I need a I need a contractor and stuff. Over what there. area? Property manager. What part of St. Louis? Um, Joe something Joe's. Thank St. Joseph, St. Joseph. Okay, yeah, that's down in uh, southwest Missouri. So yeah, or no, that's up by yeah, I think south or western part of Missouri. That's on the other side. Oh, okay, yeah, we got we getting a few things over there. So who's Ooh. that? A Lions World. I'll buy it anywhere. I'll buy anywhere where that makes sense. If the numbers make sense and it's enough population there, will you buy in Alaska? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If it made sense, if I had a contractor there and, and we got tenants to that's going to pay some monthly uh, rent, yeah. <laughs> so let me ask you this here. Here's the catch. See, people want to do exactly what you're doing here, Joseph, but how are you able to find a good contractor that ain't going to con you? So I'm mostly referral-based. So the same how y'all just saw me ask Chris, hey, you know, you know, what do you have in this area? If he's in the area, of course, he's got contracts and stuff like that. So I'm very big on like, hey, did this person do some work for you? Did they do a successful job? You know what I mean? How was their communication? If I don't have somebody in the area, then it's time to uh, vet people and do, do an interview just like you would hire an employee. I might go to Facebook Marketplace to find a contractor, but I'm going to interview them. Hey, what, you know, what company do you work for? There's a reason I'm just, I'm, I'm not asking so they can just reply to me and I'm, I'm just judging how they replied well no that's not how this goes i'm gonna write down that company and i'm gonna look that company up right right after the call like okay cool they're on google i checked the secretary of state they're a legit business that's active right i see you know i see all this there's some signs you can see like i had this one guy he's like oh this is my company i looked this company up company been inactive for two years right how are you you know how are you operating out here your your company's inactive you know what i mean right there on the secretary of state website like it's inactive two years like so there's just little things so they're not, for. not even keeping up with that dang on right keeping their llc current <laughs> right i can I, I, I can trust you but you're not even keeping you know keeping up with the uh, simple things and i'm gonna need you to send me uh twenty five thousand to start on the project send the money over first before i start to work what wire it right wire, wire it, wire, it to me, yeah. <laughs> wire straight to my account Wire it. Yeah, oh, it just sell me ten thousand and we good, right? Call your bank, increase the limit. Yeah, yeah no. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they do. So, oh, damn, this dude here—he already listing his property.
I think I missed one. I knew that was going to happen. Me being slow on the follow-up. So my VA spoke to this person six days ago. How I missed them, I don't know. But I just looked up the address and say coming soon. And they're going to try to sell it for 150 I'm going to call them anyway. Um, even though it looked like it says listed or coming soon. And it don't have a name. It has an LLC on here. So um, um, he's probably going to be a really red seller. And this is good for the training for people that's listening. So let's see what he's talking about. Hello. Hey, this is Chris. Uh, you had spoke to my assistant a few days ago in regards to your property over on Florence Avenue. Did you get that one sold yet? Uh, no. So why are you calling me? Because I want to buy it. If you want to <laughs> sell it, I'm a buyer. If you're a seller, we need to, we need to meet up somewhere, right? <laughs> Okay, what's your price? You know, that's a good question. Yeah. Would I need to go into this house and do a full rehab, or what's the status of it? It's uh, all in good shape. So it's Pass updated? Inspection. Yes, it's passed inspection. It's already passed inspection. Okay. So what was this, yes. a flip or something like that, or, or what was this? What again? So was this a property you rehabbed yourself to sell it or something, or what's the deal with it? I've had it for a while. Uh, the tenant moved out, and I re-updated re everything. Oh, okay. So you're you're in the business full-time? Yes. Great, great. Is this the only one you'll be selling, or you got some others? I've got other ones. Yeah. Are you a, buy, or a wholesale buyer or a retail? Uh, I don't typically buy them retail. I do like to buy them at a wholesale price. Now, there is a way we can buy pro properties at a retail value. You just have to get a little more creative with them. That's the only deal with that. And what do you do? Uh, so typically, um, if we have a homeowner that wants to sell a property, we would uh, negotiate a price as long as it made sense to both of us. Uh, we've done deals where we pay cash for them and they walk away. Uh, we've even structured deals where we set it up where they are no longer the landlord. They, we elevate them to become a, the bank. So they make we make monthly payments to them over time where they don't have any payments or anything to do with the house or anything to do with oh, you know okay. things like that. Have you ever done a deal like that before? No, not really. Okay. So I'm looking to sell it retail. Oh, okay. Why you don't just rent it out again? Uh, I'm moving on to other things. Okay, perfect. perfect. Okay, thanks for calling. Bye. Bye-bye. I told you he was red. How did I know he was red already? Hey, I called somebody up uh, the other day. He was he was trying to rent the property out, but the the property needed work still, and he had it for rent, and I'm like, so I called him up. I'm like, "Yo, would you be, would you be interested in selling this property?" And he's some Indian dude. He said, "Did I have it listed for sale?" I'm like, "Well, excuse the fuck out of me." <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what they be doing. They throw. You see how he's talking? So what's your price? I'm like, "Well, that's a good question. I'm not jumping in on no price." <laughs> he who says the number first loses. That's what I say. So you know, I like to ask, "What you trying to get for?" What are you trying to do? What are you trying to accomplish? But he sounds like a savvy investor. He knows everything, you know, which doesn't mean you can't work a deal with him. But the way his attitude is and all of that, he's not talking about anything, to be honest. Uh, so I'm going to just put him in a long term follow up, just like that other one. You know, and you know me, I'm different. I don't. Um, that's the one thing I, I think I do a lot more differently than most wholesalers mm -hmm. is I don't ask them what they're looking for mm -hmm. and the price. It To me, it's kind of like uh, if you're talking to a girl. And she's got a boyfriend. You don't want to bring the boyfriend. That's the last thing you want her thinking about. So for me, <laughs> I ain't bring because most of the time they want some crazy off the wall price, and I don't even want to like let them even say it. I'm just getting it out of the universe right now. So what I do more so is I plant seeds in their head on how they're not gonna get that price that's in their head. Mm -hmm. I'll never ask them. I know they want a high price. And then I'm like, oh, is the roof, you know, like you just asked them, is it rehab? Is the roof done? And they start telling me, they're like, no, 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 no. Like, okay, have you been cutting the grass? Like simple things. Have you been cutting the grass here? Like, oh, no, I haven't. I was like, oh, okay. So we're probably looking at about 10,000 in uh, lot clearance liens, you know, municipal liens. All right, that's one. And I'm saying it out loud, like I'm thinking it in my head. And <laughs> <laughs> you just death an awful number they never said. And so they never said a number, but as I'm talking to them, their number is going lower and lower in their head, man. So, 
That's that's how I do mine. That, that is a creative way to do it. Planting those seeds so they already know. Damn, he already counting. You gotta pay these back taxes. Gotta pay this lien here, net there. This mortgage. By the, off. By the time I'm done, they lowballed themselves. Wow. Right. And and I might say a higher number than what they were even thinking. You know what I mean? So. Hey, I like that. That's that's a smarter way to do it. Already pre-plant the seed and let them go from there. Let's see here. So that guy was. I mean, what do y'all think about it in the comments? What, what's the deal? What would y'all do with that guy? What would you do with it, Joseph? What would you do with a guy like that? Just whack him and keep it moving, or would you end up keep it going? I'm, I'm, a, I'm real big on fail fast and move on, man. Yeah, uh, I'm on to the next. Because because energy is everything. You know, if you keep talking to people like that, then eventually, I, unless you're Chris and you've been doing this for a minute, if you're newer and then you just keep talking and trying to talk to people who already ain't mm -hmm. hearing it, you're gonna, it's gonna do something to yourself, um, you know, mentally, you're gonna think that it's you, you know what I mean? A lot, a lot of newer people are like that. So you kind of want to move on from that, that negative energy quickly, just on to the next, yeah. right? Or seriously, on to the next. It'll drain you. It'll drain you. Let's see here. Who else we got? It's like try, trying to get into Yale with a, with a 1.5 GPA. Like you have no chance anyway. Stop. You know what I mean? Stop asking. Just go to a community college that you know is going to let you win. So call it. <laughs> exactly. Call the next keep, seller, you don't want to keep wasting energy on a deal that ain't a deal. It ain't nothing there. He even said, I want retail. I really wanted to ask him about his other houses that he wanted to sell, but uh, he wasn't really trying to have too much conversation. So all you can do with that person is move on. Why are you calling? Because you said you want to sell it. Dumb, dumb. No. <laughs> but that's what they did. I'm not going to hold it against them that's just people you cannot take anything these people say personal ever it's never about a personal thing somebody here named chris with a k this house here damn this was six days ago too damn i missed a whole group of people no this was 18 days ago this person never answered the phone when i tried to call before so i'm gonna try to call him again this is a nice house in a nice area they want 369 um um, they recently renovated the bathroom. They took it off the market for Christmas. I don't know what that's about, but whatever. Um, let me see. Is it back on the market yet? Down in Oakville. Yeah, that's a nice looking house. It ain't, I mean, it's in a good area. It ain't, ain't really that the house is special. It's more that the area is a grade A area, a place you want to be. This is where you can raise your family and send them to school and everything and be good. So let's see if we can get Chris on the phone with the Okay. Let's see here. Copy. And this was an expired listing, I believe. Or maybe they just took it off. Let me check that real quick. Because I really like to have a little bit of ammunition when I go in talking to these people. Uh, this is down on Oak Fire. Sound like a, a place where some rich folks stay. Hey, meet me over on Oak Fire, man. Oak Fire. Oh, God, he flames. Let me pull it up in the MLS real quick. Just get an idea of what we're dealing with. Uh, uh, somebody's texting me at the same time. Uh, they bought this house for 150000 back in 2000. So they got a lot of equity in it, it looked like. So a cash deal could work if they take my offer. But are they motivated to sell quickly? What is their pain? That's all I really want to know, if there's any pain. So it's a husband and wife on here on the list thing. So I look like I got to close two people. So let's talk to Miss Chris. Even though her name's spelled Christine on here, but it's K-R-I-S on here. So she need to make her mind of how she's going to spell her name. Or we did it wrong on one. So let's call her. This is Chris. Hey, Chris. This is Chris as well. You spoke to my assistant a few days back about your house down on Oak Fire. How are you today? I am well. And you? Great, great. I was just calling as a follow-up. Uh, you had indicated you were looking to sell it. We're actually looking to buy uh -huh. it. Uh, did you have a couple moments? Sure. Great. So, yeah, I was just trying to figure out um, this house here. Let me pull up the notes. Uh, it looked like it was listed before and... Uh, do you know why it didn't sell when it was listed? I, I'm not sure. Um, 
not sure. Um, it needs some updates, but um, it's a good house. I mean, we lived in it for 23 years, so. So it had, um, so you saying it's a pretty good house, just needs a little bit of updating? Is that what I'm hearing? That's it. But yeah, most of the master bath, but that's about it. You know, the other stuff is preference. We've updated, we bought it as is in 2020, and we've updated most of it. Uh, and we finished most of the basement, so. Oh, okay. Is this a walkout basement, or is this, uh, you got to go through the inside of the house? You got to go through the inside of the house. Okay, that's fine. I just like the walkouts a little better for some reason. I think everybody does, but. <laughs> everybody uh, has that kind of weird preference, yes. And, and we would have loved it to be a walkout, too. Uh, but, it, you know, yeah. it, it's a great house with a great backyard, so we weren't willing to give that up. Most definitely. You know. So what are you planning on doing? Putting it back up on the market or something? Or are you rather just selling it and be done yeah, with we'll, it? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be putting it back on the market in March. Um, we're right now contemplating whether we should just do a base level fix up of the master bathroom or what. So, yeah, that does make a difference, you know, because if it's not completely fixed up, they'll, uh, you know, it really won't, it won't move like you no, want it to. The original you know? 1970 Pepto Bismol pink. Oh, it's got the pink grandmother bathroom. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. Toilet and tub included. Yeah, I like, okay. So I, I'm looking at the pictures now. So these cabinets and stuff look good in the picture. Did you leave the appliances there or you took those? We um, took the refrigerator out of the kitchen but left the one in the basement kitchen. Oh, okay. So that green carpet uh, and stuff all has to be pulled up. Uh, the paint. I'm sorry, what green carpet? Is it green carpet on the property or am I looking at the wrong pictures? There's no green carpet on Oh, the hunter green car carpet that's in the two front bedrooms. Uh huh. Is that still in there? Those those are fine. Yeah, we put them in in two thousand and one. Okay. I mean, it's it, they're in, they're in really good shape. So that's fine. So yeah, uh, I, I, I'm still interested in buying it. I mean, if you were just to sell it as is and be done with it in a quickly time and uh, and be done with it, what would you really take for it? I'd have to talk to my husband. We think we're asking a pretty fair price, um, so we wouldn't go much lower than what we currently are at. Um, so you know, maybe three sixty. I don't know. But I have to talk to him. Three sixty. Uh, what do they usually sell for over there once they're all fixed up? Well, we have a four bedroom, and it's kind of rare over there. There was a December sale of a of, uh, of a three bedroom, three bath, about the same square footage with the completely unfinished basement at 365 so um but there wasn't much sales you know around that time period and i don't remember if i saw a four bedroom over there so mm -hmm. well you know, um so between 360 and 365 i mean sorry between 320 and 365 would be my guess so around 320 to 360 is it like I said, most of them are three bed, two bath. So I, I, I just, I, you know, it's hard to make a comparable. Yeah. Um, Definitely, that makes sense. So I mean, I'm just kind of looking at the numbers here and just kind of, you know, just overview. I haven't sent it over to the underwriter yet, but let's just say they came in and say like two ninety. What would you say to that? No. You wouldn't even. That would be a definite no. You wouldn't even Not consider that. Consideration. Yeah. I can definitely understand that. So you want to get full retail for it more so? Well, we own the mortgage outright, so we're not having a loss of income, basically. Oh, so, okay. So what if we could turn this into an actual income stream for you? We are not interested in that. We are leaving the St. Louis area. We don't want to have anything to do with it. And we have three kids in college, so we really just need the financial you know, freedom to make our own decisions. That makes perfect sense. So, you know, because what we've done in the past in similar situations like this is we've given a seller, say, a down payment, and then we made payments over a period of time where they actually had cash flow to pay for college or whatever they're going to do with the money, and they don't have to do anything with the house whatsoever. Uh, they actually sell us the house just like the traditional deal. Uh, what about that would not work for you? Um, we do not want to have any risk of loss of income due to bad property maintenance and we would actually like to 
move on to another property that we are more interested in for our you know future um, and we don't want to do the whole debt financing shit we want to just have our cash up hand i know that's right all right chris i'll let you get back to your day i just want to at least reach out to you see if there was something we could do to help you out do you have any other properties you'd be selling no no all right so that's fine right. that'll work have a good day bye-bye all right bye all right, what do you think about that lady? See, those, those are the better people to talk to. At least they'll talk, right? And they're not going to start cursing you out and stuff like that. So those are good, but they're unrealistic, bro. I... Yeah. <laughs> she ain't getting no damn 360. She ain't even going to get 320. Did you see the pictures that I flipped up no, on the screen? I have a screen here. This lady's dreaming. That, and then those houses do go. Let's see. Let's say that house is worth about three fifty five. She's talking about three sixty, which is you know full retail. But this house, I'm gonna pull up the pictures again. Yeah, computer. So this is what the house looks like. Mm -hmm. Um, that's the carpet. I mean, the kitchen don't look too bad. That backsplash is ugly. You know, I mean, it's an out of day house like any other house. Mm -hmm. Old carpet. I mean, it's not a bad house, but who's gonna pay top dollar retail? for a house that has, where that green carpet at, in a bedroom. I'm trying to get to the green carpet, which she forgot was even had that when I first said it. I said, what you gonna do about that green carpet? Look at that bathroom. Oh, this is one of those dumb tubs that's down in the floor too. Look at that tub. <laughs> See, this is no. stuff I'll be talking about. That whole bathroom have to go. The whole bathroom. That's one of those step down into tubs for like elderly people. And it's pink, peach. And then it got the ugly border up there. All oh, that gotta go. And that green carpet. So these are the things you deal with. It needs updating. There's no question about that part. So she won't get that number. So I guess I'll just follow up with her in about a month. Look at, see these, look at these terms I just negotiated. 45,000 purchase price, 3,000 down, 15 years installments. Okay, 2%. Did they agree to that? Yeah. Damn. yeah. You recognize that company? <laughs> oh, wow. So you ain't playing around. So they uh so they accepted that offer. Yeah, so uh she got those from tax sale after of course you know I started going to Clubhouse talking talking about the tax deeds. She went to tax sale and got this for just twenty eight hundred dollars. Wow. And then, you know, you know, seller finance, all right, cool, bam, paying over time. But yo, this is a house she got for twenty eight hundred bucks. She's making all her money back on the down payment. And then she's gonna cash flow for fifteen years, right? Wow. So that's, that's the exit crazy. numbers. That that number you just showed that was the exit. The exit numbers. Oh, so but I'm buying. I'm buying though, right? So it's it's fire. So people don't understand this. Like when I teach you how to do something, we still can be partners. You know what I mean? Like all right, I told you how to go get it for three thousand. Now sell it to me for eight. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I don't mind paying you for the deal. Just bring a deal, right? Right. So we making money. Like people don't understand. We don't just make money once together we continue to make money together so this is a prime example man but you you doing your thing bro i just wanted my people to come on here and and watch a real wholesaler work man and and, and talk to people and and not get every call under contract that's not how yeah. this goes yeah it's impossible. it's impossible it's not possible to do that now we do get some from time to time to come in hot they ready to go and i'm like that's why we talk to those pre-foreclosures they got a gun up to their head you got to make a decision you mm -hmm. can't just let it go to auction. So I, I jump right in and save the day. I stopped with, I don't know, 15 auctions last year or something. Yeah, I love so, it. So, I mean, you stop doing them auctions and buying them houses, it's like, shoot, let's go. Yo, I love it. But look, y'all, I am I got to run. But before I leave, what you tune into, you turn into. So, like I said, I wanted y'all to see a real wholesaler out here, you know, do his thing. So, if you're not already following uh, Chris, Chris Monroe, give him a follow. Uh, I first... Man, I think I first heard you, Chris, like three years ago in, in Clubhouse. I was like, man, this dude is good. Right? This dude is good. And so, uh, I, you know, if I'm saying he's good, y'all, he's good. All right? Because I'm going to call it like it is. I wouldn't be on this live with him if he wasn't good. Let's just be for real. Yeah. So, y'all definitely, you know, keep following. He's, he's putting out knowledge just like I am. So just keep, keep your knowledge base up and keep growing, getting better and better every day. But that's all I got, man. Chris, I'm going to leave this thing to you. And uh, yo, keep doing your thing. One hundred percent, appreciate it. That's the name of the game. Talking to some sellers, man. 
so yeah i'm uh i think i'm about wrapping it up here soon in a minute anyway because i got i got something else coming up at 12 30 i gotta do but any other questions or anything y'all got put it in here now before i wrap it up make sure to hit me a follow hit that little thing up there at the top follow up follow up and uh yeah i got more content coming i got a lot of videos and clips and things up my youtube channel got over 250 something videos on it instagram here popping all that uh chris do you use a third party servicer for your creative deals no i don't use them i can but i don't typically use them uh, let me see here somebody trying to come in alive um but yeah that's the name of the game so no i i can use them but i don't typically use them no because I don't use servicers. So so let me just give an overview. So third-party servicer is to make that payment on that loan. Uh, we set it up on auto pay from a separate account that's already set up. We can do that if a seller is like one of those people that's like, oh, yeah, it's got to be this and that. I don't have a problem doing that, but I typically do not use a third-party servicer. At one point, I will have to because I have too many houses. Um, when we buy about 10 more, we don't have a choice. So the name of the game with that what's up schmeter thanks for the follow uh somebody asked him for let me see who is this asking for a live i don't know hope it ain't nothing crazy coming in on a live you keep requesting request and be blessed nope okay it went away uh accept i accepted your live request Hope you're talking about some real estate. Don't be coming here doing those crazy stuff. It don't matter. I'm about to wrap this party up. Either way, so don't forget to follow me on all social media outlets at Chris Monroe STL. That's Snapchat. That's Twitter. That's Instagram. That's Facebook. That's YouTube. That's TikTok. That's Clubhouse. Like you said, you see me on Clubhouse, on X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it. Fan base, all the same thing. Chris Monroe STL. So with all that being said, do what you do, be who you be, and I'll see you before you see me. Woo! Because the boys in the hood is always hard. Peace out.